Coffee's giving me life. What's up, squad fam? Eric Flobert here, back today in New York City with my swanky, cool hotel. Hotel, blinds up. <laughs> back with another video today. Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking me about this monstrosity. Uh, I got the 1DX Mark II a few weeks back. I uh, shot my first wedding with it handheld, which turned out amazing. It's an amazing camera to shoot handheld. And I wanted to start going that direction with my filmmaking, whether it be documentary style, YouTube, just kind of that shaky camera look. I've been shooting that way with weddings recently, and I'm really excited about it because I have built out this rig for it. I really haven't seen anyone else do this, and I feel like a crazy person for doing it, uh, but there are a few key things that I've learned from doing this where I feel like it's kind of a cheat mode and almost like a cinema camera. So I'm gonna break it down for you guys today, uh, every, every component in it, all the parts, tips and tricks I've learned so far with using it, and then the newest piece of gear I'm using in conjunction with it to make it even more documentary style, that kind of floaty look, music videos, that kind of vibe. So here's the rig and let me go outside and we'll break it down. Break it down, y'all. So this weekend, my dreams came true and I got to rent the Easy Rig Mini Max from my associate shooter, Jesse. We have done multiple weddings like this in this setup with the Easy Rig, uh, but I get to try it out for myself this weekend. Really stoked about that. Probably gonna get my own. Um, and this is just enhancing that documentary type feel where it's just kind of floaty and it's stabilized, but it's still kind of shaky. So when you walk uh, in stride, it's definitely bouncy, and it helps if you're shooting in 60 frames or 120 frames in slow-mo to smooth that stuff out, and you can put some warp stabilizer on it and post. But what I love about this is it displaces all the weight to your hips. This can literally just hang here. You can slide it up, slide it down. You can bring it down really low, all the way to the flow. <laughs> I have the 1DX on rails here, and all of this is from small rig. So it's on rails on the bottom and a, a counterweight in the back just to kind of balance it out because it's pretty front heavy over here. Uh, I have a cage that fits the 1DX. All of this is in the description of the video. Cheese plate up top and on the cage, which holds the Noga arm, which extends out to the small HD Focus 7. And on this monitor, I can set zebras, which shows me that things are overexposed. I can put my LUT on here. There's a SD card that slides into the monitor and I can load a LUT on here to see what my image is going to look like in post, which is incredible. I can put on focus peaking or just look at my image and it's really easy to manually focus with this here. On the right side in the cold shoe mount, I have a Rode VideoMic Pro that's just going right into the camera for scratch audio. And up here I have a top handle, which whenever I take the Easy Rig off, or take it off the Easy Rig rather, I can just have a top handle where I run handheld kind of low or bring it up to my chest like this. When I have this all set up, I prefer it to be on the easy rig as much as possible so that I can be hands free and do a bunch of different things. I think that's all about this. So let's show some examples of what this looks like. with the variable ND um, because you can kind of just keep your settings the same all the time and just switch the ND over whenever you need to be brighter or darker as long as it's not maxing out on full darkness. I 
wanna show you guys what the plumes look like with the ProMist filter and why it looks like so dreamy and glowy. So I'm up here against this shop with all these lights and the, the window's kind of foggy, so that's just gonna kind of enhance it. But you can kind of see like the plumes around the light bulbs. It has, it has that kind of dreamy, foggy kind of look. So that's the rig. Uh, I'm really excited to be using this thing. Uh, one thing I have realized, and somebody commented in my previous 1DX video, I turned on highlight tone priority. So if you shoot with the 1DX or any Canon DSLR, make sure you bump this on, turn this on, because what it does is it, it gives you a full stop um, re of recovery in the highlights of your image, and it synthetically boosts the shadows a full stop. So the lowest you can go down to in ISO is 200, but it gives you a full stop of dynamic range to work with in your image. And I've noticed that's really, really changed the game for me in this camera. Um, it, as long as I'm not blowing out highlights and I'm being really intentional about that, looking at my screen, turning on that, um, the zebras on here, making sure I'm not blowing out those highlights, the dynamic range on this camera is actually pretty impressive. I shoot to a custom flat profile and yeah, I just love how the image looks after I throw a LUT on it in post and make some tweaks to it. The things that really suck about this rig that everybody's going to criticize and what's going to drive people away from wanting to do something like this is that the 1DX and the file sizes on this thing in 4K are absolutely enormous and completely cumbersome. Um, I shot a full destination wedding in Hawaii with my wife on this rig and a couple 5D Mark IVs. We came back home with 1.2 terabytes of footage <laughs> in 4K. So uh, if you're willing to drop the money on hard drives and space, do it, um, but it's, it's not a log profile, it's not raw, it's motion JPEG. So there's not as much you can do with it as those other camera profiles, those other codecs. So take it for what it is. Now, if I was only making films, I definitely would have gone with like the Canon C200 so I could have the versatility of that. But the truth is I am a photographer and a filmmaker, so I want a camera that's gonna give me the option to do both. So if I wanna do run and gun filmmaking, I don't have to set up the cage and the rig. I can just shoot handheld with this camera and shoot photos at the same time, which is really versatile and awesome for me. I only have to bring one camera on the road. The other cumbersome thing about this is that it's just so heavy. Um, it's a pain to lug around, but if you're willing to put in the work and get swole, my arm is cramped, there's too much coffee. <laughs> How did you get those pipes? Dude, I lift kids and I lift 1DXs. I have children, I don't just go to parks and lift kids. You have to purchase these wicked fast CFast cards. This is a ProGrade 256. You can tap the screen to autofocus. That's what's so good about Canon, good Colin. Go. So one of the crappy things about this, you have to buy CFast cards if you wanna shoot in 4K at 60 frames per second or the 120p. Uh, these cards are wicked expensive. This is a 256 gig card. Uh, the read write speed is 550 megabytes per second, but this card costs $350. I have two of them and sometimes I run out of space on them, so that sucks. The batteries are beasts on this thing. LPE19, it's very large. Use my head as a comparison uh, for scale. But this battery lasts a really long time. I only have two, so sometimes I have to hot swap them or, or charge them on site, which stinks too. I'm thinking about getting a third one. It's just, it's not a cheap endeavor either. This is definitely an investment, but one that I'm excited about and uh, excited to work with for this year. Um, I'm starting to shoot some of my documentary stuff on this for the marathon that I'll be running in October. If you haven't seen any of that stuff, go ahead and go to Instagram. You can do hashtag qualify film. Check it out. I hope you guys liked the video. I hope this is interesting for you. Um, even if you hate it, leave a comment about why you hate it. If you like this video, go ahead, like and comment. I, I just said you should comment. Just go ahead and like it or dislike it twice if you don't like it. And subscribe and ring the little ring ding bell. And... I'll catch you on flippity flop. Flippity flop. I think there's a lot of people that are gonna wanna shoot with this camera like this. But then there's gonna be a ton of people that are like, 
Yeah, but if you just get a Fuji X-H1, you could just have like a fifth of the size and weight and all the same things and everything.